Hey guys, I am Nitij and this is the second video of the best coding practices series uh, when we are working uh, using the jQuery code library. So in this video I am going to talk about these four best practices and the first one is add class instead of setting multiple CSS attributes. So uh, consider an example in which we have an input element and uh, the ID of this input is let's call it txt name so it simply means that this input is for the name and what uh, we have to do is whenever this input has focus then we have to set the display state or we have to change the display display state so that uh, the user can see which uh, which input is currently selected so uh, let's suppose that we have to uh, set the four different CSS properties for this namely the font color and then the background color and then uh, maybe border and then let's also change the border radius uh, so the thing is to do that first we have to first we should uh, get the reference of this of, the, of this input element uh, by using jQuery and I'm going to use jQuery's ID selector for that. Now what we can do is we can simply set the CSS uh, of this element uh, for uh, different CSS attributes. So the first one is color and I'm going to set the color as red and I'm just going to copy this statement four times to set different values and I'm going to set the background color as green and for the border I think I'm going to set the border as 2px which is solid with black color and then for the border radius I'm going to set the value as let's say 10px so I, we, I'm going to assume that uh, whenever the uh, whenever the user is going to click inside the text box then uh, this entire code is going to get called and it is going to set the display state to something else to or to a different state so this code is not really bad in itself if we are going to use it for only once throughout our code but uh, things will get really awkward when we have to uh, reset the display state to its original state when the uh, when the, when the focus is lost from this input and that is uh, you know really uh, not not very good way to write uh, to write the code or to set the display state so jquery has different ways to solve this problem the first one is what we can do is instead of setting individual css properties uh, we can simply create a CSS style or a CSS class to do to do that and so first I'm going to uh, create a CSS class and I'm going to name it um, let's call it uh, text focus and inside this I am simply going to copy all of these CSS properties and then I have to fix this code so that it is going to be compatible with the C C style syntax and then for the border and then the border radius and that's it so now instead of setting the uh, these different CSS properties what we can do is we can simply add this class text focus uh, to this element and that's it oh I'm sorry I just forgot to add the add class so we need to use this add class function to do that and Similarly, if we want to remove uh, all these properties, then we can simply call the uh, remove class when we have to reset the display state to its uh, original value. And that's it. Uh, we won't have to deal with all these uh, individual properties. In the, uh, and 
uh, there is another way to do this when we must use the CSS function instead of uh, using a class then what we can do is we can uh, we can put all the uh, properties inside an object so for an example what we can do is let's call it where uh, CSS obj equals to now this is an object and inside this object we can simply Uh, we can simply put all these properties and then we can later uh, send this object as an argument so all right and yes we are done i think no still we are not done so i think right this should fix it okay so now what we can do is we can simply call the call the CSS function and then we can simply send this CSS obj object as an as an argument and then we won't we, we won't have to uh, write uh, these four different statements to do this we can simply uh, pass this object as an argument and we can uh, we can place this object into some kind of different script file as a metadata for these styles and that's it okay so now let's quickly move on to the second one which is naming convention of jquery variables now this one is very simple uh, what we normally do is we simply uh, name our variables based on the work it is going to do but for any jquery object it is always better to apply the prefix of dollar which uh, will simply imply that the variable is a jquery object so we can uh, get to know that the that, that the variable is a jquery object by simply looking at it at its name and so yeah and then we can you know select some element based on any selector value and that's it so this is another good practice the third one is use javascript to find elements for simple selectors now whenever we have to find an element using either the id or the tag name then instead of using jquery we can simply use javascript because the jquery is again going to uh, call the javascript code to do that so if the selector is not very complicated then uh, we can simply uh, use the uh, use the javascripts api to do that and which is for an example to select an element by using its id we can use document dot get element by id and then we can send in the name the id of the element and then we can do a lot of different stuff although the thing is that we won't be able to access the jquery's apis when we are selecting an element using the uh, javascript api so if you are planning on using uh, javascript uh, jquery i'm sorry jquery's features then you must select the object or the, or the or the DOM element using jquery but if you want to do simple things like you want to simply set the uh, let's say inner html or you want to set the text or you want to maybe uh, i don't know you want to uh, set some attribute value then uh, you can simply use the javascript to select this element so the fourth one is using jquery as an argument and this uh, uh, this best practice basically applies to functions so whenever we have a function uh, in which we are going to access the jquery and let's give this function a name let's call it maybe i don't know let's call it some function so the thing is that whenever we need to access the jquery in this some function then it is always a better practice to send the jquery as an argument uh, whenever we are going to call this function because the reason for doing that is uh, whenever any code inside this function will uh, will access the jquery object then it will first look inside its own scope uh, and if the object is not found in its own scope then it will uh, jump to the parent scope to look for that object so uh, this jumping to towards the parent scope uh, is kind of a performance hit it's very minor i mean it's really not noticeable actually but when our application is very big and we are uh, having like hundreds of 
uh, immediately invoked f immediately invoke function expressions then uh, any any small any small performance optimization makes a big difference uh, in the bigger picture so uh, whenever we are using jquery in a function or in a module it is always a good practice to send the jquery object as an argument so if we have for an example a self executing function which is also ca called as an immediately invoked function expression then uh, you might have seen that the structure is uh, that people the structure that people uh, generally use is there is the argument for the jquery and then for the document and sometimes for the window and then there is the undefined also and then when this immediately invoked function expression is being called then we are simply uh, passing the values as an argument so the reason for that is they simply uh, give a very small performance gain which becomes uh, noticeable when the application is very big and this approach can also be used in the ready functions of the document because if we have hundreds of pages and we are using document or ready for all those pages then what we can do is we can simply send the jquery as an argument whenever we are invoking it and yeah that's it so these are uh, very you know very very basic examples of some best practices that we can follow and if you have any question then please feel free to use the comment section and thank you for watching this video have a good day